Okay, I'm more than a little bit excited. I've been waiting for this moment. We're here to take a look at the brand new BMW X4. Now in its second iteration, the X4 is actually built on the same platform as its smaller sibling, the X3. But that, according to BMW, is where the similarity ends. Well, I don't know if I'm going to completely agree with that. If you stand directly in front of this car and take a good long look at it, you'd be hard pushed to point out many of the differences from the front. But if it isn't broken, why fix it? And you'd have to say that is a very nice looking front of a car. They've done enough to make the front look business-like whilst keeping the very, very distinctive and classic BMW front. Now, the X7 should drop later on this year and we're expecting that to have a very similar looking front as well. But what's really great about this car and all of the X-Series is the way they develop the concepts going through the vehicle. Let's take a look and see what happens around at the side. This is where the X4 really starts coming into its own. Now, you may just about be able to see the overall height of this car has actually dropped slightly from its predecessor whilst it's grown in length and not by a small margin either so i think you can agree that that really gives this car a sporty feel and that's very important because i understand that they're going to be going for the same kind of customers as the glc coupe really and uh, the jaguar f-base as well i think uh, and with that they're going to need to push the sporty elements what I like about the side is the way that it has been drawn out. So even though it's big, and when I say big, take a look at these wheels here, it doesn't look bulky. It still manages to look elegant and graceful. Now, obviously it's gonna come in lots of different flavors. This model in particular is one of the two M's. There's gonna be one petrol, one diesel, although I think initially only the diesel one will be available in some markets. Which engines are available where is always a little bit complicated. Um, we'll have more information on that when we do the first driving event. But for now, you can see how the M styling has been applied to this car. It was already looking pretty good, and I think Jonas is going to take some shots of a couple of other models so you can see how that's been applied. But here we get, I think, the car at its absolute best, because the sports styling of the M series, of course, who doesn't want this little badge right on their car, really does fit the style of this vehicle. Now, BMW will tell you that it's not only that it looks sporty, it's also very practical and designed for both fun and uh, fast and off-road driving. That's a lot of promises to live up to, so it will be very interesting to see if it manages it, but you certainly can say that the style promises an awful lot. Following this lovely flare through to the back, these LED rear lights have really been slimmed down and they now bend right the way through from the side into the back. This car is an unbelievable eight centimeters longer. That's about three inches. And that really adds to the way that the car looks on the road. From the side, you might expect something a little abrupt in terms of how it translates into the back, but I'm very pleased to say that it's been superbly blended in. Now, I don't know about you, I'm getting a little bit of the GLC Coupe from the rear of this car. It looks really good. I particularly like these styling details up here. It just add a little more character and help break up the back. And again, it's one of those features that really allows you not to recognize how big the car actually is. It makes it look about as visually small as you can whilst being very imposing. They want to put the statement of the weight lower in order that the car looks grounded and really sturdy, really capable of going off-road, and then remove that sensation of weight from the top in order that you still find the car looks fast. And I really do think they've done a superb job with it. What do you think?
So now I'm pretty sure I know what you're thinking. If you like the X3, that's a really important deciding factor in whether or not you're going to like the X4. Because, again, if you sit in here, you could very much think that you were sitting in the X3. The styling is very similar. For what it's worth, I actually do like it. And until I looked down at this area, I thought finally we'd found a car with no piano black in it. But no, BMW have put that across the central console as well. Never mind, it is what it is. Well, let's talk about the seating position first. These seats have lots of adjustability and I'm hoping that's going to include to the bits at the side because they are very, very close at the moment. And I'm not quite sure how that adjusts. So I'm going to assume that it adjusts and, and let them off with that because I'm not the world's biggest person but I am being held very tight at both sides and it's not massively comfortable. So I think possibly somebody previously has adjusted them and yes feeling back there I can see they definitely are adjustable I just don't know how at the moment so the cockpit is digital and they have these rims on them now I don't know what you think but to me they look somewhat reminiscent of what Audi were doing with their digital displays a couple of years back I think it's interesting because it certainly does make it look more characterful than just a flat screen but then again, it does limit your customization. Once you start physical elements within digital displays, it means you are very limited in terms of what you can display on there. But as long as you have everything that you need, I guess that that's absolutely fine. So coming through over on the dashboard, we've nice metal features. Um, this car, I think this is actually rubber, not leather. Feels nice, it looks good. It really resonates quality. As with the X3, everything about sitting in this car just says, this is a quality vehicle. It's well made, the materials are very good, and it's nicely put together. I feel very happy. Look how much headroom I have. More than sufficient. I'm five foot 10 or 178 centimeters, and I have plenty of space above my head. And that's with this panoramic sunroof that I have above me. So that always takes out a little bit. The driving controls, are very much what you'd expect from BMW and so is the experience of sitting in this car. It is all clean, uncluttered and focused. Everything about this wants me to concentrate on driving it and ultimately that's what I want to do. All right, well I don't think I'm going to be surprising anyone when I tell you that once again the swooping roofline has killed my experience of the back. I don't know if you can see this but I'm nicely wedged in between seat and roof. So unless you have very short friends, this really isn't a car for backseat passengers. In fairness, the project leader did tell us when we interviewed him that this was much more of a car for single people, possibly slightly older. They're clearly gonna need some disposable income and not a family car. There are other BMWs for that. So I don't wanna be unduly harsh in terms of what happens back here. If I had to sit here for a short trip, it would actually be fine. It's just not going to be something I'm going to want to spend a lot of time in. That said, the finishing and the materials are nice, exactly as with the front. Everything is clean, uncluttered, and it just works. Possibly could have done with a USB charge point, but we do have the 12 volts still. And as we already said, I don't think you're going to have too many people sitting back here. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that the boot space has gone up. There are now 525 litres of load space back here, and that is 25 litres more than the predecessor. That's the extra length of the car giving us that extra room. Now, you might well look at the space back there and think, surely they could have given some of that to the rear passengers, but of course, because of that sloping roof, that is as far back as you can put the seats. And I am happy to say leg room behind has increased as well. But look at this load space. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the X3, controversially, for me at least, being a smaller brother, actually has more load space available to it than the X4. But this is the car you want to drive because the whole idea behind it is going to be that it's sporty everywhere it goes, on and off-road. To help with that, we now have a much lighter chassis. There's a lot more aluminium in this car, and the aerodynamics really allow it to travel at greater speed as well. So for what it's worth. I think if we're talking about a person or a couple owning this vehicle, they don't really care about who sits in the back. 
and they do care about how much stuff they can put in the rear. So this will provide you with ample space to take whatever you want to when you're going off on your grand tour right throughout Europe. Let's have a look underneath this floor panel and see what we're hiding back here. Well, first things first, let's mention this gas strut on the floor. That's a really nice feature. A lot of cars don't bother to include that. Obviously, it adds cost and that adds to the retail price. But if you actually have a need to access things underneath the panel, you really need a way of doing that easily. This is lovely. It's a parcel shelf for the top, which is not currently fitted, but it has a storage area underneath the floor. What a great idea. That means when you don't want it in, there actually is somewhere proper to store it. And look at this. We have extra storage underneath that as well. This, I believe, is the extension to the parcel shelf to actually fill it up. And you can see we have even more room there as well. So really nicely designed, really nicely thought of and really well finished. Nice. The similarities with the X3 don't just stop at the platform. The engine range is exactly the same as well. So it won't surprise you to learn that all of the best loved engines from that series are also going to be the best loved engines of this series. So although we do have a fairly extensive range and lineup, when it's going to be introduced and where it's going to be introduced is still being decided. I've been joined by Joachim Dunkel and he is a very happy man today because he is the project leader responsible for the brand new BMW X4. Welcome to Autogafour. Thank you very much. So, I think let's start off with the obvious. This is a very good looking car. What were you trying to achieve with the redesign of this car that's distinct and different from the X3? This is one of the main messages. It's really different to the X3 because this is much more sportier than the X3. We address it also to different customers than the X3. When you're going to the hatch, you see how sporty, how athletic this car is. And this is one of the main topics from the exterior side, yeah. Excellent. Well, it really does look very athletic. Can you tell me a little bit about the drivetrains that will be available for this? Uh, we will start with uh, two uh, uh, benzina and with also with two diesel cars and in the summer they will extend to additional to uh, diesel car, um, engines. Now you told me that the customer is going to be a little different to the X3 so I have to ask what is the target customer for this car? I would say uh, when you are looking from the age side I would say people who are living for their own not having a big family they will using the X4 then when the family is in, in, in first priority then they will for example change to the X3 but then when the kids are growing up and they're not, not a member of the family for every day, then they will also join also going back to the X4. Well, I'm not going to disagree with that. I have three small children, but I want one. Really? Now, okay. <laughs> I don't want to let the kids in it, though. Just, just me. I won't even tell them I have it. It's more a race car for the father, I would say. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Well, the engine specs right off the bat look very good from a performance perspective. How have you managed to match that also with the fuel economy? Because they, they also look good on paper. That's the same like the X3. When you see the consumption of the car, for example, you can absolutely compare it with the X3. There's no differences. And that's, in the moment, it's very acceptable, accepted from the customer side. Well, that sounds very hopeful. So I have to ask you, what features of this car would you really like to draw our viewers' attention to? For this car, I really like the exterior. Because when you see it also from the, from the hatch, from the tail, I would say you can see the, the, the muzzles, you can feel the muzzles, you can, you, see, you can feel the athletic of this car, which is much more of my favorite of this car. Can we take it off-road? Of course, of course. And you can really? Really? Yes, of course. And you can also take it on the racetrack. I tried again in Talladega and it was absolutely great to drive this car. With the 240 kilometers at Talladega racetrack, it was absolutely great. Yeah, I'm not jealous at all. That doesn't sound interesting to me, no. <laughs> Wow. Well, so you're inviting us, Auto Gefühl, we can come and do the same. We can do this in, in summer when we have the EPV, that's international uh, press uh, presentation for this car. Yeah? We are welcome. Perfect. Well, watch out for that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I have to say, I think it looks absolutely superb. If it drives as well as it looks, I think we're all going to be very happy. It sounds cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll see us. With some car designs, it's really difficult to see exactly what the intention was when it took place. With the second generation of the X4, I'm very happy to say that that simply isn't the case. It's very clear to see what the design brief was. It's sportier, it's more aggressive, it's more agile, but it fits 
perfectly into the current X lineup. And I like the synthesis in the range, making everything uniform. Okay, so there are some features that I think maybe could be tweaked a little bit, but certainly not in terms of its exterior aesthetic. Wow, it's just a nice car to look at. And if the drive promises to deliver everything that it says it will, then I think we're gonna be very happy with the car overall. On the interior, well, like I said, I don't think you wanna to be too hard about the lack of room for backseat passengers. It really isn't that type of a car. I'm really happy to see the increased load space in the boot. That's very nice. And the driving experience seems like it will be very comfortable. Now, we had a word with the project leader and he told us that he had taken this car out at Talladega and that there was also a possibility that that would be where the world premiere driving event will be. Hmm, I'm certainly excited by the prospect. We'll just have to wait for now.